टी वी विजय साई रेड्डी जी थैंक यू वाइस चेयरमैन सर सर इट इज वेल अप्रिशिएटेड दैट इट इज एन इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ नेशनल इंपॉर्टेंस and when compared to the parent act with that of the amendment bill the parent act provides for only ar domestic arbitration and conciliation whereas amendment bill provides for other other forms of alternative dispute resolution in the manner specified by the to be specified not at specified <coughs> i'm answering this question to be specified by the central government through regulations i expect honorable minister to specify the regulations at least in the near future sir i have four suggestions to be made to the honorable law minister in this regard i suggest that government should ensure minimum judicial interference and maximum institutional autonomy sir in the ad hoc arbitration the parties are unable to mutually agree on, a, on an arbitrator section 11 of the arbitration and conciliation act 1996 empowers the supreme court or high court to appoint an arbitrator however the biggest problem in this regard is the courts take several months to appoint an arbitrator thereby the resulting it, it results in substantial cost to the parties sir the this defect this defeats the very purpose of arbitration it meant to be fast and since it meant to be fast and cost effective method of resolving the dispute sir interestingly section 11 of the arbitration and conciliation act also empowers the supreme court and high court to delegate the function of an arbitrator to any person or institution that is the existing act however in the past if you see the past not a single case where the supreme court or high court empowered or delegated the power and <coughs> it is hardly seen in any of the courts <coughs> hence i suggest that international arbitration center should be designated as default institution it can't be in the hands completely in the hands of uh, supreme court or high court or as the case may be for appointment of arbitrators in ad hoc arbitrations i am talking about the ad hoc arbitration sir this has already been done in arbitration friendly countries like singapore and hong kong this will ensure minimum judicial interference and maximum institutional autonomy sir this is one suggestion the second suggestion sir which i would like to make is problem of having the retired judges as arbitrators this has to be addressed sir the worrying trend that is emerging in india's arbitration is arbitration landscape where the retired judges are largely appointed as arbitrators why why only retired judges i am not saying that serve, serve, serving judges rather i urge the government and the law minister to promote the growth of arbitrator community in india like judges community why see the uh, the, the dire need to ensure the arbitration in india does not amount to mere post retirement opportunity for judges that is not the intent of the act sir this retired judges are running like these retired judges who become the arbitrators after retirement they are pro conducting the proceeding arbitration proceedings like court proceedings this would not be correct this would be incorrect to say that today's judge after retirement becomes the arbitration arbitrator after retirement this is the trend present trend in this country sir so this has to be addressed by the government sir so the third suggestion what i would like to make in this regard is skilled human resource mm -hmm. sir concerns have been expressed about the arbitration center lacking expertise required for its effective functioning sir the rules issued by the center under the parent act do not prescribe parent act do not prescribe arbitration experience arbitration experience as mandatory experience now for the appointment of councils even though they are required to deal with the matters relating to domestic and international arbitrations i i suggest the honorable uh, to the government that the arbitration experience should be made 
mandatory for the council sir in the nascent stage of development itself i hope the government will ensure qualified professionals are engaged in the arbitration center rather than what i have stated just now sir sir uh, the fourth suggestion what i would like to make is lessons from the singapore and hong kong and in the case of arbitration many parties who have got money they prefer to go to singapore or, uh, or hong kong or london why why not india sir uh, sir the national our asian neighbors like singapore and hong kong have become top arbitrator arbitrator destin arbitral de uh, destinations due to their immense financial and infrastructural support they got from the government and the balanced approach sir on the, on the other hand because uh, just uh, please see the figures sir in 2020 21 we have government allotted only 1 crore uh, for, to the arbitration center in 22 23 it has raised it to 3 crores i urge the government and the law minister to extend the adequate <coughs> financial resources to for the development of arbitration center so that this can be emerged as uh, international india's international uh, arbitration center sir so there is no doubt that this this bill will give a loud and clear message to the international community about india's arbitration friendly environment therefore with these suggestions we support the bill thank you very much sir thank you honorable professor manoj kumar jhaji